What's up guys, Houndish here, and today I wanted to jump in and talk about some Destiny 2 new stuff. So I want to talk about a few things we know about the Reef returning in the September DLC. Of course, Bungie have said that we'll be getting a reveal for that very soon. I want to go over some roadmap stuff as well, speak about a new Nightfall exotic which has some lore which relates to the Reef. There's a way that you can reduce the amount of duplicate override frequencies that you get for sleeper nodes. Also, the change to Escalation Protocol is now live, and we have some data on how that has actually changed and how much easier it has become. I want to talk about the perks on the featured faction weapons and a couple of other things. So if you guys enjoyed this video, a like really helps me out down below. But for now, let's jump straight into it. So first up, as you probably heard, Bungie confirmed there will be a year two reveal on Tuesday, June the 5th at 9 a.m. Pacific. That's 5 p.m. in the UK, happening at twitch.tv forward slash Bungie. Now we saw this image for the reveal. I was really focused on the kind of structure that you can see in the background, but obviously this appears to be in the reef. We've also seen this before, of course, in the post game cinematic, we saw Mercury, Mars, and then the reef. So obviously it was kind of foretelling where we were gonna go in the future. And this image pretty much gives us confirmation of that. So we definitely going to be going back to the reef in one form or another. I think it's very interesting this structure that we do see though. Of course the reef is full of kind of debris of broken ships and things like that and while the structure is kind of fragmented it definitely has more of a formation than a lot of the stuff we've seen. It almost looks like a portal potentially or something like that. Of course that is pure speculation but it's pretty interesting nonetheless. Obviously there are other references to the reef in the Warmind DLC. We've got Prince Aldrin's ship crashed on Mars and here's a pretty interesting one. This is actually for an exotic item which hasn't dropped in game yet, but we know about the Stark Baffler ship. It seems almost certain at this point that this is going to be a Nightfall exclusive reward for the Zol Strike, because of course that takes place in Rasputin. And we do have the Warmind theme on the ship, but it actually has a lore tab which is pretty interesting. And this comes from a character, Safine Delrig, the captain of a ship. I don't know exactly how you say that name, but it says this was my first year commanding the ship. We had to race to a battle just at the edge of the reef. And of course the reef itself is made up of an almost impossibly large sort of coral, the amassing of countless gold Golden Age ships. Anyway, we were in the middle of a battle when I saw the letter I spelled out by a bunch of ships. When the battle was over, we kept our cameras trained on this one set of ships as we traveled just so they remained together in our view. And soon we saw that there were more letters miles long, a H before the I, and soon the rest of the words tell them we said hi, spelled out in dead ships arranged just so that you could only see them from a right angle. It's just so odd and obviously human, and whoever did it had a great sense of humor. So pretty interesting right there. They reference it saying, tell them we said hi, so it does seem like it's some kind of collective or group. They refer to it being obviously human, but I think it actually could be Awoken potentially. Of course, we have been kind of disjointed from the Awoken ever since the Taken War. So there's potential that this is a reference to the Awoken themselves, but obviously it's a strong reference to the Reef. Once again, though, we'll see if we get this thing dropped, starting with the Will of the Thousands Nightfall. But in terms of the stream we're going to see next week, it appears that it's going to be more about the kind of changes to the way Destiny 2 is played on the whole and some of the bigger kind of scope changes as opposed to brand new content. Of course we may see new content during the stream but I'm predicting that trailers, new gameplay of modes and things like that may be reserved for E3. But on the updated roadmap they list year 2, season 1, gear collections, records, weapon slot changes, randomization, gameplay modes and more to be revealed. So I would think that they're especially going to be focusing on randomization, the slot changes, records and that end game element for Destiny. But let me know down below if you're excited to return to the Reef and potentially learn more about the Awoken or even some of the Fallen Houses. Of course there is the Fallen House of Dusk in Destiny 2 that we don't know that much about. The Awoken do have a lot of links to the Fallen so it seems like the enemy itself could potentially be the Fallen for this expansion. Next though I wanted to talk about override frequencies for the sleeper nodes on Mars. Of course once you get to a certain point you begin getting a lot of duplicates when you combine the different resonant stems. But Fuzzy Barbarian actually posted a very interesting video. He's done a lot of research on this and it appears that combining stems in certain areas will give you a higher chance of getting an override frequency for another specific area. So I'm going to link his video down below, definitely worth checking out if you're really curious about it. But we can see from the image he provided, Mine Lab Rasputin, combining keys here seems to give a 36% chance of getting an Alton Dynamo frequency. The same for Braytech Futurescape, although you're more likely to get one for Glacial Drift. Combining in the Alton Dynamo has a 40% chance of giving you a Futurescape frequency. And while the data pool isn't absolutely huge right now, it does look like like from early reports that Fuzzy could actually be onto something here. So I'll link that below if you want to check it out. 
Now let's talk about escalation protocol. We heard that Bungie are going to be changing some of this. Turns out it actually happened yesterday. So DMG said it happened in tandem with the TWAB. Happy hunting. So of course they actually reduced the power level of enemies. And this is between waves four to seven. Spaced bar, not unusual and tasty maggot on Reddit actually did some research on this. And with the change for max level players, during wave six and seven, you'll effectively be dealing 28.7% more damage than you were previously and taking 77% less damage than before the update. So that's a pretty significant change right there. Obviously, if you're below max level, it won't quite be that high, but it's still gonna be a significant difference now that Bungie have changed the levels those final few rounds. And so considering this week, the boss has a chance to drop any of the weapons, it definitely seems like a very good week to jump in and try and farm, especially if you haven't done any yet. You can also use LFG. I have seen a few posts on LFG for folks that have actually got nine player instances and they're looking for people to jump in. So although it can be awkward, I really think now is gonna be the time to jump in and start getting some of this loot, especially before players potentially start dropping off in a few more weeks time. Now though, I wanted to talk about the featured faction rally weapons. Of course, Bungie broke down a whole bunch of changes for the faction rally, the reputation system, how you acquire different rewards, even the way you pledge and stuff like that. I did make a video breaking down all of those specific changes, but I wanted to talk about the featured weapons. These are of course the winning weapons. So whichever faction gets the most reputation will be the winner. And one of the following weapons will become available. So first up we have new monarchy. I actually think this is the least exciting one. Pretty interesting new skin that they put on this rocket launcher the broadsword launcher. In terms of perks, it has adaptive frame, counter mass, volatile launch and smart drift control. Also comes with implosion rounds. We've got high velocity rounds and auto loading holster. I personally don't think it's that exciting. Of course, one of the issues as well is that we have a bunch of very, very good rocket launchers in the game already. So I'm not really feeling this one personally. Next though, we have the Basilisk shotgun from Dead Orbit. This one actually has a lot of potential. So it's rapid fire frame. It has smooth bore, rifle barrel and fluted barrel. It also has extended mag, you've got accurized rounds, and then auto-loading holster. The key thing of course though is rapid fire frame, you've got rifle barrel and accurized rounds, so it's going to have very very good range on it, and it already has relatively good base range, I think this is going to be very solid in the crucible for shotgun fans, but it should also be a solid shotgun all around. Then we have the vision, the sidearm from FWC, this one actually looks really good. Armal on adaptive frame, well rounded, reliable, firing a 3 round burst, it has target SAS, short spec, and far point SAS. The middle column sees accurized rounds or appended mag. And then we have kill clip, especially for Armalon adaptive frame sidearms. These are the burst sidearms, very strong in the crucible, just like the last hope or any of those kind of things. Having kill clip though is going to be very interesting. It will make it lethal in PvP when that's procced, but it's also going to be pretty nice for PvE content. So I think they've chosen some decent featured weapons here. I feel like this one is definitely weighted towards FWC and Dead Orbit in terms of the featured weapon. But of course, that is no longer the only thing up for grabs, as well as ornaments and stuff like that. You have exotic ornaments and exotic weapon catalysts. So that's definitely positive. And I think these will be much more engaging than they've been in previous seasons. Cosmo confirmed that rewards won't be capped at rank 30. So as long as you put the time in, you can get all of the rank up rewards for a single faction in one event. And of course, some people have been a bit anxious about this because you can only pledge to one faction per event now across your entire account. DMG confirmed you aren't locked to a single faction for the entirety of the season. You may pledge to an alternate faction with each event. So for folks who are collectors, and like to have everything, want to pick up all of those catalysts, ornaments and everything else. It's going to be a busy few weeks over the summer when these events are rolling out. So guys, that is going to summarize the video. As I said previously, next Tuesday is going to be very, very busy in terms of that weekly reset. One hour before reset is when Bungie will do their reveal stream. Then of course we have the reset itself. That's going to bring the faction rally. On top of this, Nascent Dawn 5 of 5 will drop. Potentially a new Nightfall as well with new rewards. And of course we do have that Black Spindle, which is time gated locked away in the game and will be dropping at some point the quest has also been updated added into the game and ready it's anybody's guess as to when it's going to happen but it's there and it looks like it's ready to go but that's enough sitting around talking about destiny for now guys i appreciate you watching as always if you've enjoyed this video a like really helps me out below once again thank you so much for all the support for hitting 200k as well that's absolutely insane i appreciate you all as always speaking of that if you're new to the channel feel free to hit subscribe to see a lot more d2 content. Also check out my sponsor Now Drinks. They do some really nice products. Now Drinks are designed for gamers, but instead of being filled with caffeine, sugar, and all of that not so healthy stuff, they're packed with vitamins, L-theanine, lemon balm, super tasty drinks as well. And you can save 10% in the store using code Houndish. The link for that will be below. But whatever you do, I hope you guys have an awesome day and an awesome weekend.